Hi, everybody. We are live right now on a Friday evening. I'm going to rearrange this a little bit here. Make sure you're getting a good view. There we go. Hopefully that's going to stay. We're in a new spot today. Baby is sleeping as of right now. Um, so we're going to see how long that lasts. <laughs> if you're hearing background noise, like a clicking, it's because he's in the swing. Um, other noise is just because I'm in a different room. So, you know, but we're going to make it work, right? We're going to jump right in. So the plan for today is, and I've done this a few times, is I'm actually going to randomly select a um, color palette from this book. So this is that Pantone 20th Century in Color book, um, which has been, I mean, it's such a cool book. I recommend anyone getting it. It's a coffee table type book, um, but it's got like tons of cool stuff. Um, and it's got these color palettes on the side here. You can see that on the side here. Um, that I'm going to randomly select from this book. And then I'm going to create a painting, and I don't know what it is yet, based off of those colors. So let's select one. I'm going to use my watercolors today. I do have my Paul Rubens metallic watercolors out as well, which we might add our own sparkle to whatever we decide to do. But let's randomly select a color palette. So I'm going to just, not, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to get here. So bear with me. Um, the last two times I had more of a muted palette when I did this. It'd be kind of fun to have more bright colors, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to just open it here. And uh, we'll, we're just going to go with it. Obviously, if it's an intro um, page or something, we're going to have to redo this. But So if you're just joining, I am picking a random page from this book and taking the color palette that's assigned to that page and doing a painting based off that color palette. So here we go. Ooh, that's one I flipped to just now to show you the book. Look at this. See those colors here? Bum, 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 bum. It's lit, it's uh, Princess Die, isn't it? Does it have a description? Yeah, Lady Diana with her fiance. Cool, and you can see the colors they're picking from us. Uh, let's see what, what um, 1980s, 1980s is what this chapter is on and so you can see how there's a lot of different things um color palettes from that era or from that uh decade here so um we're going to use these five and we're going to make something so i'm going to keep that off to the side here so that we can reference it uh oh baby is stirring this could not be good If something happens, I can always come back. But there's our color palette. And um, we're going to figure out what we might want to do with that color palette. Got to get creative here to kind of ensure that this book will stay. There we go. Okay. So let's see. We've got like this crimson, kind of pink, red. We got some golden colors and we got some green colors. I have to let the inspiration soak in here. I think, and I have my pen today because I think that'll be kind of fun to add a little bit of interest. Um, Yeah, let's try. Okay, so I'm going to turn it this way. And I'm going to start just putting down Thank you. 
starting with some organic lines here, just getting some of that in place. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing, but you know, we're gonna go at it here. Picture something kind of rustic looking, viney kind of. like I'm against the clock here because baby may or may not be stirring in the background um, and he's going to be hungry eventually here so we're going to get as far as we can right that's what we can do this one can be a little bit thicker as it comes down What I picture is at the end of this, and I might go a little bit kind of abstracted here, kind of a, a poofy, I hope this one doesn't have a second side, a poofy kind of flowery thing. Maybe it's got little kind of little petal-like things on it. I don't know. Maybe there's some littler ones that have little petals. Kind of flowery, kind of like... I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing, guys. I'm just winging it. This is... I, I have the most fun with this because there's no expectations. I can just kind of like make it happen. want something coming from this side kind of does the same thing maybe he kind of juts out this way and we got a little one that's maybe drooping a little bit more maybe get one that kind of goes this direction Sometimes it's fun to just see kind of what comes out of your head. When you're given restrictions, like a color palette and only certain materials or something, or time in my case right now, <laughs> it kind of pushes you to, to see things differently. Ooh, I'm kind of liking this. Oh, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. This is a little weird. I think we might need to incorporate just another little branch. Right in here. A little off balance though, so I'm gonna come this way and put a little guy 
over here. Okay, there we go. So there's my little random flowery plant thing. I think I'm just gonna jump right into painting. I'm gonna try to make this color as close as I can with the materials I have, colors I have. So I've got this really nice red. It's pretty vibrant actually. And that's not too far off from this one, but it needs to have a little bit of pink. So then we'll put in a little bit of this pink. And boom, that's actually pretty darn close. That's pretty good. Sometimes watercolor can be a little bit um, fussy in that regard because it, it's a lot lighter. I'm just gonna paint in at least the main parts of the flowery shapes with that color. Being a little bit more loose with it. It's a very pretty color, very vibrant. Okay, the question is those little petally things, do I make them just a lighter version? Maybe, does that count? Lighter version's not in the piece itself. If I just take a little more water, less pigment, and just kind of brush over those little I think that could look cool. Yeah, I'm digging that. I'm digging that. Okay, so there's kind of a, the look so far, kind of flowery. So we've got that color covered. Um, I kind of want to do maybe this sort of brown, green is what it's called, like a brown green kind of a color. Um, we'll add sparkle later. Start with just the basic colors in there first. So we got a nice brown, and we're gonna add green to it. Let's see if we can get close to green. Ooh, maybe too green. Close though. A little bit more. Yeah, there we go. That's what we want. I think I'm gonna just fill in branches. I'm kind of leaving white edges a little bit because I think that's um, acceptable. Kind of adds sort of a painterly effect. It's kind of reminding me of like um, Chinese traditional painting with ink brushes a little bit. It's feeling like that anyway, right now, which is kind of cool. I wasn't thinking of that aesthetic, but. I 
Actually, I should have another flower right there. I've got a little end of a branch. Add that other flower in there. Because why not? It should be there. And we'll fill in there we go. Okay. So that's what I have so far. Get a feel for that. Okay. Hi, Abigail. Thanks for joining. Hope you are doing well. Oh, I got a little bit of red. How'd that happen? Wasn't paying attention. There's a little red splatter on the white here. I'm actually gonna cover most of the background anyway. So, um, so we've got the two colors done. Now I want to do the greens and this rich gold. I think they're gonna look really good in the background. Um, now I need to think about how I want to do this. Because I could do, let's make, let's make this color first. Whoa, look at that. It's like almost the color, exactly. Sometimes a dirty palette is all you need. <laughs> uh, we're gonna bring that over here. It's kind of a mustard color. Oh, it needs a little bit more of like a green to it to just dirty it up a little bit more. There we go. So that's the color we want. But we want to, we're going to do wet on wet. So we're going to come in and we're going to, in the gaps here, put down just water. I'm going to start on the inside and work out. I'm going to put just water down where I want paint to go. I'm going to take this color. I'm just going to plop it down in there. Kind of rustic. Okay, and then continue that. I'm gonna let the water color do what it needs to do. And then I'm gonna go in with that same color. Plop, 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 plop. Let it do its thing. Maybe it's got darker patches, lighter, like it make it look a little um, sort of tie-dye looking. Mix it around a little bit. Plop in color. Baby is stirring. <laughs> How much longer do we have? It's a good question. Good question. We'll come over here and put some down. And over here. And then that color. I'm gonna make sure we have the right color because that's the whole point. Um, 
let's see here how far do I want that to go. Actually, I want to probably make, well, I can, I can work in layers, assuming I have that time here. But if I come down and put the gold color here, and then with that gold color, I can always put the greens and stuff over this later. There's no pressure to have that going down at the same time because I can do it all I want. Making more of this color so that I'm ready. That's the trick with um, watercolors. You do have to mix ahead of time a little bit. Oh, ouch, sorry. Hit the funny bone. And this is gonna go off into the distance here. Let that yellow gold color just sort of bleed out. Let's put a little bit in here as well. We'll put a little bit in here. Oops, that's dry. Some of these you just want to sort of put a color down and then not fill the whole thing because you want it to sort of be a, a hint of the golden color bleeding out. Okay, so that looks kind of cool. Kind of cross it diagonally. Um, kind of a fun, different way to think about that. Um, but then I want to put in these greens. So let's make this, this green is actually very similar to like the green from my palette. It's actually exactly the green from my palette. <laughs> Who knew? So I'm going to come in and do the same thing with the green. I'm going to start down in here. This is where I can overlap into my gold a little bit because I don't want it to be a harsh you know, definition. We're going to just stick that in there. It might need a little bit of blue actually when it's on the paper it looks a little darker or sorry lighter and it needs to be darker okay Putting in the green, putting in the green. Letting it seep into the gold. So actually some of that's wet already. It's perfect because then I can just go plop, plop, plop. Plop, plop, plop. Let it kind of move its way over and it almost mixes into different colors, which is kind of cool. Not exactly what we want because we were only working with the five, but you know. We can break the rules, right? I think so. I mean, who set the rules? I did. So I think I can break them. I just love doing wet on wet technique. It's just super fun. Let's switch um, to this side do a similar thing here. To, the trick is to make sure your paper stays wet long enough for you to put down the color because it has to be wet for it to move around. And then a little bit in here. To kind of mix with 
those colors. I'm loving these color combinations. They're really pretty. Really pretty. You can get some really good ideas. I definitely recommend this book for any artist out there who um, is curious or wants to play with color mixing or just it's just kind of fun to have. You can even take color palettes from other things around you, too. It doesn't have to be like a designated book or anything like that. Okay, ooh, it's so pretty. I'm loving how it's mixing with the gold in there. I'll hold it up to you in a moment. It's still very wet, so I'm gonna wait. And then we've got the really, really, really deep forest green here. It doesn't look green probably to you, but it's really, really, really dark green. So we're gonna attempt that as well. Let's see if we can make it start with the main color here, the hue. It's a hue of green. Uh, it probably has black in it, but then it's it's a little warmer, so I'm gonna put a little brown. Honestly, a little bit of red. Compliments are great. Yeah, for mixing the neutral color. Ooh, that's it right there. Okay, so now the trick is, what the heck are we gonna do with the dark? My guess is we probably need to do the same thing where I come in here, do that some open spots and put down water to then plop in that deeper, darker green. And we are going to have to kind of let it mix with the other colors here. So overlapping. And then plopping down a little bit of that color into there. Because contrast can really um, add a lot of interest. And so we don't want to be afraid of putting a darker color in the background because it can really add a lot to a piece. It's hard to keep the color really vibrant in watercolor. It just gets kind of faded and blah sometimes. So you have to do a few layers. Okay. Not too shabby. I might want to bring that color down a little bit more this way and around this flower because I think that's going to look better than it kind of staying. Okay, well, so far I have all the colors in there, and this is what it looks like. Um, I've probably got a few more minutes here, so let me go in with a little sparkle and see if I can show you that. I'm going to put down some sparkle in that sort of color in the background. Oh, we got a stirring baby. Perfect, because we're going to put a little bit of this down, 
and I'll show you what that looks like. I've loved this palette. Paul Rubens watercolor set. I have a YouTube video um, to, or a review of this palette. You can check it out at my channel. But look at that. Can you see that a little bit? Woo, it's like a gold happening. I can do the same thing with sort of the pinks. Just a touch of it kind of in the flowers is kind of a fun thing to add. Mm. I really like to try to make sure you guys can kind of see that. Oh yeah, you see the glisten I put on the flowers? Woohoo! Thanks, Abigail. Yeah, I'm liking it so far. I don't know if it'll need more later of something. As it dries, it'll look a little different, but we'll stick with it for now. We could put a little bit of this on the stems. It's kind of a nice brown. The colors are matching perfectly, which is kind of fun. Put a little brown in there. And then there's this, these really light, ooh, that was really creamy. Um, light creamy color that I could kind of put just a little glisten on maybe the tops of the flowers and on the little petals on the side. Hmm. I'm just loving this palette. I wasn't sure if I would get as into it as I have been, <laughs> just because, you know, metallic stuff can look a little cheesy at times, but it just adds the perfect little touch of interest to the things that I add it to, and I'm just loving, loving that. So there's, there's a little glisten of that on the flowers. Ooh, shiny, shiny, shiny. Um, but I think I'll probably stop there for now. Um, I got the colors in there. They could probably be a little more vibrant, but again, my background's pretty wet, so I want to let that dry before I do some more layers, but I could totally, you know, ramp up the, the colors a little bit more. But there you have it. We have our finished product with our color palette. So here's our color palette from the 1980s. And here is our finished picture. Again, yeah, the colors need to go a little bit deeper. You can see like the green's not quite right. Um, that dark green's not quite right. It was right on the palette. That's the thing with watercolors. It's like the right color when you're mixing it, but then you put it on the paper and it just lightens a whole lot more. So I'm gonna have to go back and darken those things. But um, Actually, let's do the green just right now while we're thinking of it and while it's it's a little bit more dry. But if I come down, I can do another layer of water just to give you a sampling. Another layer of water and then you just plop in more of that green on top and have the same effect. And it can just richen, enrich that color a little bit more which is perfect. So I'll just kind of do that to darken things up. But thanks guys for watching and tuning in. And um, yeah, we made it through without baby crying. <laughs> He's about to. He's about to. So I'm going to let you guys go. Have a great weekend and um, be creative. Spend those rainy afternoons making cool stuff. So see you later. Bye.